Hello team. Uh, good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. I am Bharat, uh, one of the presenters today. I'm an architect with the Odim team in HP. And along with me, there is uh, Shiva Charan. I'll be going through a brief introduction to Odim, its architecture and how it looks in deployment and uh, build dependencies. And then uh, Shiva will uh, actually go through the build procedure, not actually building it, but you know, running the instructions through and uh, showing a demo uh, with Odim in action, adding resources and removing resources to Odim. And uh, you can ask your questions when the presentation is going on in the chat window. Uh, either uh, Shiva or me will try to answer your questions. So we'll just get started. So ODIM is uh, standing for Open Distributed Infrastructure Management. It's what we call as a resource aggregator. So if you see in this uh, slide, we have the upstream clients and users. So this could be the cluster frameworks or resource managers, service managers, or any other uh, off the shelf or custom cards versus Mano offerings. Now Redfish will say, be there in between these upstream clients and the actual physical hardware at the bottom. And uh, the way we do is we uh, do that is we expose a standard Redfish uh, interface as shown in the blue arrow, the two, two, two ended arrow. And if there needs to be a integration between the upstream clients and then Odim, this integration adapter plugins is going to do exactly that. So you see green in green is the native interface for the upstream clients and uh, below that is uh, odim it uh, you know you can say it offers a hardware as a service interface and it's a it implements a pure redfish interface now the, uh, at the top we show the redfish interface that is there and then you know the, the box in between we have the service of the redfish uh, dmtf services like account, event, aggregation. Aggregation is a new service that has been uh, you know, brought into the standard by our team this year. So you can um, refer to the 2020.2 standard spec and you'll find details of this aggregation schema. And session composition and all have been in the Redfish even before that. And uh, if you go further down a little bit, you will see the abstraction layer and you know that is the plugin layer. So southward also we have a Redfish uh, API being exposed. So we connect to the devices using the Redfish API. So we have Redfish or uh, between the plugin and Odim is Redfish, but depending on the device interface, it could be I IPMI, Redfish or any other proprietary interfaces, All right? So this is the general architectural introduction for uh, Odim. I'll proceed to the uh, Redfish model. For those of you who are familiar, uh, it's okay, but you know, if there are people who are not familiar with the Redfish model, this is an early model. So the Redfish is like, uh, you know, this is how they model their uh, schemas. You have the service route, which is uh, Redfish V1, is a constant for all Redfish implementations. And you have the service of the task service of the session, account, event, registry, and schema service. So task is something like when you request anything of Redfish, it may give you a task handle to track your trans uh, task request status. And uh, it's also possible to get notification via event services. And uh, sessions is for maintaining sessions when you have a login to Redfish. Accounts is obvious, uh, you know, you need to have an account to create that and this account service helps you do that. And similarly, events. Events is uh, for publishing events from the devices. Now, Odim doesn't, is actually a manager of these managers. So each of these ILO or ILOMs or ID racks, depending on the vendor, they are modeled as a collection resource. So you have systems which will model these ILO, ILOMs or ID racks under which you have the system, computer system schema, and then you know different sub schemas for specific information about storage, Ethernet or uh, log service, processors, memory, uh, it's too many to list under this in one screen. 
And similarly, the systems, as you know, will be hosted, hosted in a chassis. So you have the collection of chassis here and uh, the power and thermal uh, metrics are basically got from the chassis schema. And then you have the uh, manager's collections, which refers to the BMC in case of uh, say Dell, HP, IBM, uh, x86 uh, equipments. So they host things like log service and what network protocol, for example, whether you connect it to HTTPS or uh, SSH or things like that. And what are the ethernet interfaces? So you can have a different ethernet interface for the BMC and one for, uh, different for the system, right? So both of them, if you see, have ethernet interfaces. And then you have the virtual media and stuff like that. This information in the screen is from uh, the DMTF. Uh, so it's their uh, IP. I put the source here if you want to, you know, uh, go through that below. That link is having details of this. I mean, the full document will be there available. Then uh, I go on to the software architecture of uh, ODIM. Uh, at the top, we have the API service. And then, you know, that in turn calls the different services. Now, where you see US, that stands for microservice. SVC is a service. So you have aggregation as a service, but system, fabric, manager are all collections. And then um, account session and event session service also is uh, microservices. Then we have the task service. We internally use uh, Redis for our database. So we just, uh, you use it as a document database. You know? So we just uh, put the JSON schema here and uh, use it. We also use Kafka for, as a message bus and uh, it goes out with the console in this release. And uh, here below we have this compute plugins, which you know bridge between ODIM and the BMCs or the uh, you know, that's a generic name you could replace with the low while long or ID rack and stuff like that. And uh, there's also a fabric plugin, uh, which will, uh, which currently supports Ethernet fabrics. The storage plugin is meant for the external storage, that is the SAN storage. Currently, it's not uh, supported because the Swordfish itself is uh, undergoing changes. Now, if you see to the right, you have the description of the interfaces. The dark blue interfaces are the HTTPS interfaces, and then the red arrows depict the message bus interface, right? So all these API services and uh, services and collection microservices interact with the devices via the compute plugin when needed. And um, if you see, the there's a red arrow that goes from the plugins to the message bus. So what this is showing is uh, that, you know, the events are being sent, say, from the ILO or the BMC events or Ethernet interfaces, uh, fabric events are going to send to the Kafka MQ. Kafka MQ, for, uh, again, uh, you know, forwards that to the event service and, uh, or rather, event service pulls it from there. And then, uh, you know, depending on the subscriptions, we forward it to the end users in the client uh, layer. Now here you note that you know we are saying will forward because not all the events go to all the consumers. So it, depending on the events that a particular customer has, uh, as client has, uh, you know, subscribed to, only those events are forwarded to the user via the event service. And uh, aggregation service is shown to have a red interface because there are some events like when you initially add a node there is no way you could have subscribed for that particular node. So whenever there is a node addition, we the aggregation service generates a resource added uh, event. All these events are Redfish based. And um, uh, task service also sends because if uh, you create a, you send a request that creates a task, then you can get a notification on the event completion or progression. You don't have to keep pulling, so that's, why you have that interface. And then this blue interface is already covered. That is the HTTPS interface. So when we add a system that would go from the aggregation service via the HTTPS interface, goes to compute plugin, which will discover the device and add all the topology information in the Redis database. And the acknowledgement is sent back on the HTTPS and then back to the end user. 
So that's the rough uh, flow. Shiva, we have any questions on the chat? Not yet. Okay. So then I'll proceed. So this is like a more in detail uh, uh, diagram for showing the interface where you know this box represents ODIM RA, which exposes an HTTPS connection. So you'll note that all the connections are uh, HTTPS, not HTTP. So we use only server certificate, uh, server side uh, authentication using certificates uh, for HTTPS. You know, the API service that in turn connects with each of the service, which is event fabric collection, uh, aggregation task service and others. Now some of them or rather most of them connect to the Redis database as well uh, to fetch and set. So like aggregation service, once it adds a device to the, uh, you know, uh, it's when it gets added, it adds all the topology information. When I say topology, I actually mean the whole Redis, Redfish schema that is stored here in Redis. So that subsequent uh, fetches are, you know, uh, cached in the Redis DB and not uh, fetched from the date, uh, plugin every time. And um, here you see this uh, compute plugin and fabric plugin indicated by the green arrow publishing events to the Kafka and Kafka in turn sends it to the event service here. Aggregation service also has a green arrow here indicating that, you know, that when we create an event at, from the ODIM manager layer uh, to indicate this event uh, for uh, BMC is being added. And so that's the green arrow here. And um, task service also sends it to Kafka because when the task is completed, it will send a notification out to uh, Kafka. Um, if you see the, all these microservices, they're communicating uh, with HTTPS interface to the plugins that is denoted by the red color so that we understand it's the interface between the microservices and the plugins which talk to the devices eventually. All right, so I think uh, that's about the software interface. Um, the last thing I'm going to speak about is the tools and third party. So we have used the Ubuntu 18.04 LTU as a development platform and also the platform where this uh, primarily runs on. But then I say primarily because, uh, you know, if we take Docker images and Kubernetes, Kubernetes support is planned for the future releases, but uh, Docker we are uh, having in this. If you go to this site, you have uh, uh, information on how to build and you know create Docker images and deploy that. And then your runtime environment could be any Linux or we never, never tried it on WSL, but at least other Linux platform should work well. Uh, the primary tool is uh, Go. We use uh, 1.13.7. And then we have uh, used a few bash scripts for uh, creating the Docker images and stuff like that. And um, tools include Make, OpenGDK. OpenGDK is uh, actually only, uh, the JR is only used for the key tool and not for the, any other part of the code. And uh, Docker CE and Compose for uh, you know, creating Docker images and deploying them on CE. The third party tools that we use is uh, Kafka 2.5.1 for the message bus and uh, Zookeeper uh, 3.57. That's for the Kafka itself. Uh, we don't have a direct dependency on that. And so the so does console, which is used by Go Micro. So the Go Micro is a platform we use for uh, inter microservice communication, uh, and, like within the product. And um, the plugins themselves, we use the HTTPS interface. We don't use Go Micro for the plugins. The idea being that uh, that will be, you know, it's up to the person who's using it. They, if they want to write a plugin on their own uh, and they want to choose some other language, we don't want to you know, bind them to Go if they, they have the independence of writing it in Python or Java or whatever language they fit, they see fit. And uh, Redis database is also there. Um, as the backend store. 
we use both the uh, in memory and on disk uh, db storage uh, at this point if you have any quick questions i could take it or yeah but there is a question yes uh, this asking in order to support odim to end device type okay so the for the bmcs you know it depends on the firmware versions and the vendor like right? there'll be variations across vendors and firmware versions so we have uh, provided a generic redfish uh, plugin as a template and uh, with minor modifications you should be able to support any bmc which is having a redfish support uh, otherwise the plugin has to be more involved in that you know if it's a ipmi or snmp or anything that the device provides the plugin will have to talk to odim as uh, in the northbound with the redfish api and then to the device in the pro uh, proprietary protocol so uh, that's why we put in that plugin you know so that we can adapt any kind of devices so as i said before uh, compute and uh, network that is fabric is there uh, compute we have provided as a sample with the source code in the uri below uh, you can have a look at it and i think it should be easy to customize to your requirement especially if you are just talking about pmcs does that answer your question okay Thanks a lot. Uh, I think Shiva, we, if you don't have any other questions, we can proceed with your uh, part. Yeah. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, let me start sharing the screen. Uh, let me know when there is um, see the screen. Yeah, I could go to the top of the screen. Just highlight the URI so they know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as mentioned in the uh, slide deck, uh, this is the same data link that we have, uh, where we have all the source code and uh, the steps to install and use uh, Odimare. Uh, for my part of the demo, I'll be going through uh, the deployment steps and uh, a couple of uh, use cases where we add a resource, uh, a delete resource, and uh, based on the subscription that we created, um, uh, see the events reaching uh, a user-defined client. So uh, the first part of the demo is <clears throat> looking at the deployment itself. Uh, as part of prerequisites, there are a couple of um, packages that we need to install. and um, one of the major prerequisites is to have um, uh, Ubuntu 18.04 as the uh, operating system to perform all these actions. Uh, the first step is to download and install Ubuntu 18.04. And uh, the next couple of steps talks about uh, installing the prerequisite packages uh, for Odimare, uh, such as uh, make for uh, the deployment process, OpenJDK, and uh, uh, installing Docker also. Uh, so in our environment, all the microservices are running as Docker container. And each of the uh, third party tools that uh, Bharat just presented, which is uh, Redis, Kafka, uh, Zookeeper, Concept, all of them are uh, running as containers. So uh, to deploy them as containers, uh, we'll have to uh, install Docker. Along with installing Docker, we'll also install uh, Docker Compose, uh, which is basically um, uh, a tool which uh, installs all our dependencies with uh, a single command, um, which is all the Docker dependencies, containers, and uh, any other uh, container deployment that we need. We can use Docker Compose to deploy. Uh, the next step is to uh, add the uh, user itself to Docker group to perform further actions on Docker. And then we check if uh, the status of the uh, Docker service is up and running or not to verify we can continue with the installation. 
uh, and then we make sure if there is any proxy in your environment to uh, add the proxy into uh, Docker proxy setup and uh, make sure the Docker picks it up and uses that config. Uh, and then we just restart the VM just to make sure uh, the Docker services are enabled and picks up the latest uh, proxy config. Uh, after the prerequisites are installed, uh, we jump into the installation of Odimare itself. Uh, so Odimare and uh, Gender Redfish plugin, both of them are uh, installed part of this uh, process. Uh, part of uh, prerequisites are uh, default configurations. Um, we need a certain set of ports to be uh, open for uh, Odimare and Gender Redfish plugin to be running. Uh, these set of ports are. Uh, we can also uh, uh, change the default configurations, which will be mentioned at the end of this page uh, about the steps, how to do, and what steps to follow. Currently, uh, these steps talk about the default default deployment. Uh, the first step is to get the repository uh, cloned, and uh, next uh, we. Uh, ask the user to uh, create a FQDN, which is basically setting a FQDN such as, like, say, example, odim.local.com for uh, for the REST API usage and for the HTTPS communication. And uh, we make sure we uh, ask the user to export that FQDN and uh, the host IP where we are installing the modem itself. And uh, we add that QDN into ETC host. Uh, since we are in uh, Ubuntu 18.04, uh, we ask the user to add the FQDN into specific path. And the next step is for certificate generation. As we saw in the architecture explanation, we use uh, certificate uh, under HTTPS communication. And uh, we uh, Create the certificates so that the Odium uh, can contact the plugins using the certificates that we generate. And uh, once we create certificates, we make sure we append the root uh, certificates into the resource aggregator file, the resource aggregator um, certificate file. Uh, the next step is uh, for us to uh, generate the certificate itself, which is using RFQDN, which we have asked the user to set. And uh, the next set of certificate is for Kafka. And we run the copy certificates from a script, which is basically uh, the whatever scripts you have generated, uh, we copy it into a specific folder and uh, make sure Odin picks it up from there. The certificate paths are mentioned below. Uh, for Odin certs, this is the path uh, for Kafka that we generated. Uh, it's under this path, and for generic Redfish plugin, uh, this is the default path. Then we go back to the uh, root folder of Odin, and we run the make all command, which basically uh, builds each of the services and uh, push to make creates all the containers needed, which is basically building Odin or a container. Uh, Kafka containers, the kick container, Redis container, console container, and the plugin container. Uh, so part of this make, uh, make all command, we also make sure all the prerequisites are built and pushed into the containers, and the configuration is also set. And uh, we also make sure that uh, uh, Redis has the default uh, prerequisites uh, entries uh, with, to be pushed into it. And um, uh, Kaf, uh, uh, the generic refresh plugin container, um, uh, even though the service will be running inside it, uh, it will be individually running. We'll have to add the plugin into Odium to continue using it. The user can choose not to use generic refresh plugin and use his own plugin if he wants to uh, add his own specific resource if he has any. Uh, the next step is uh, once the make all command is completed, we verify if all the individual microservices are running or not. Uh, each of the services are uh, tagged with SVC in the name 
uh, of the service binary. So we can grab with SVC and check if, uh, say, for example, API service is running or not, a concession service is running or not, and uh, aggregation service, so on and so forth. You, make sure you can check each and every service status if all of them are running. Um, and uh, there is a default log path that will come up in the bigger steps where we can check if any of the service is not coming up and there is an issue. Uh, the default uh, configuration path uh, for ODMRA uh, ECTC ODMRA config where there's a config uh, file present where the default set of values will be present. And if the user wishes to change it, uh, he can and restart the services so that he can uh, get the uh, latest config into the services. For plugin, uh, this is a specific config uh, folder. And these two are the uh, default uh, uh, ports where the FQDN can be accessed. And the log uh, path is as below where we put it into uh, var log ODMRA and the generic request plugin logs will be under var log GRF plugin. We also have a noted clusters for uh, uh, log rotation. If the user uh, wants to perform log rotation, uh, this steps is to get into ATC log rotate folder, uh, create the necessary config, and uh, get into the uh, cron job. Uh, folder to uh, monitor the logs as he wishes. The default credentials with which the ODMRA and general request plugin are uh, running are uh, as mentioned. So if the user wishes to uh, perform any REST uh, APIs, he'll have to use these two credentials for plugin and ODMRA. So there is also a readme file under uh, aggregation service which talks about uh, how to add a plugin and how to add a, a BMC into ODMRA. The next uh, set of information talks about uh, if the user wishes to change the default configuration that's present in ATC ODM config and uh, run with his own configuration, uh, he can traverse into this path, open the config file. There are a set of parameters uh, for each of which we have uh, defined a description and uh, the user can go through it and if he wishes to change any of these, he can change it and uh, restart the services. So the list of config file uh, parameters is here. Uh, at the end, we uh, restart the Docker container so that uh, the uh, services uh, under ODMRA picks up the latest config that is changed. Uh, any questions so far? Before I move to the next, uh, next part of the demo. Sure, there is another question from Saad. Uh, I'll answer this. He says if there is any KPI or performance list available. <clears throat> um, what exactly you mean by KPI? Is it the server uh, metrics or ODM itself? Okay, the server metrics uh, is available from the chassis schema uh, as far as the temperature and CPU utilization is uh, concerned currently. Telemetry will add uh, because you know it's a very large amount of data. So if, uh, we've not done it in the first phase. We'll pick it up in the subsequent uh, Yeah, so all these metrics will be supported. Server storage and network. But storage and storage, uh, currently there are no plugins, right? So I don't think anything should be available. But network plug, uh, that is a fabric, uh, KPS will be available from the, will have to be available from the fabric plugin. And uh, server metrics, as I said, will add support in the next uh, one or two phases. Uh, there is, uh, there is, <coughs> sorry, there is no list uh, currently, but uh, if you could uh, just leave your contact information, uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, 
Maybe you can uh, <clears throat> mail me. A... Okay, yeah, thanks. We'll get back to you, Saad. Thanks a lot. Yeshiva, we can continue with the demo. Yeah. Uh, so for the next part of the demo, let me switch to the next tab. Yeah. Uh, for the next part of the demo, uh, I'll be adding a particular BMC plugin and uh, uh, watching that um, the events for those will be uh, seen in the client side. So uh, part of this demo, um, we can see that uh, there are, um, okay, uh, so Odim uh, currently uh, we support two types of authentication. One is via XR token and uh, basic auth. So uh, a user can choose to create a session token um, and then use that token for subsequent operations or he can use uh, basic auth where he can provide the uh, username password in the header and uh, request. Uh, Odium for specific operation. So currently, I'm uh, the tab I'm showing is uh, a basic REST client, uh, which uh, can be used uh, for performing any operation on Odium, or if any call command is also uh, fine. So uh, first step is uh, I'll be showcasing for uh, creating a session. So uh, Odium array. Uh, there are standard set of uh, URLs that are mentioned under Redfish for each of the services and each of the actions. Uh, so we can follow the same uh, to perform uh, any action. And uh, the Redfish spec also talks about um, what parameters to give and uh, in what format and which are mandatory and which are optional and uh, the format of each of the parameter. So if we follow the uh, Redfish spec guide, um, we can uh, easily uh, take up all the URLs that uh, Odin exposes and perform all the actions. As part of the first step, uh, let me create a session. Uh, as we know, uh, in the readme file, uh, as I showed, the default credentials that Odin gives is uh, admin and uh, with a specific password. Uh, so Odin also has a password um, uh, conditions that has to be met when we create a user. So uh, we, when we create a user, uh, we also have to uh, specify the role of the user. Uh, and each role has a certain set of privileges, uh, which talks about if the user can only view a certain set of uh, information or perform certain set of actions, and uh, so on and so forth. So when we create a user, uh, there are uh, three sets of uh, uh, roles that are default uh, provided by Redfish, uh, which is the same will be added into uh, release to be a part of the volume deployment. So when we create a user, we can use the uh, either one of the uh, three uh, roles, uh, administrator, operator, and uh, read only to uh, define a certain set of operations for that user. And uh, we also uh, can create uh, uh, custom roles has certain set of privileges uh, if the user wishes to do so. And uh, for now, I'll be using the default uh, user, which has a admin role with all the privileges present with them. So when we create a session, uh, let me go ahead and uh, post the request for a create session. When we create a session, uh, what are the response we get uh, uh, session created? And the XR token will be present part of the uh, response header. So the user has to uh, take that XR token from the uh, header and uh, use that for his further uh, set of operations. Uh, say, um, first, uh, before adding uh, anything, uh, I'll just uh, show that currently we don't have any servers added into our system. We use that same XR token part of the uh, header. Uh, and get on the system's URL. You can see that the members list is empty currently. And uh, before we add a particular uh, plugin or a server, 
uh, first thing is uh, we can see that um, uh, we need to monitor a certain set of events. So uh, if a user has a specific client, uh, sorry, if he has a yeah, user has a client where uh, user monitors um, all the events and perform certain operations based on a certain set of events, uh, he, we can provide that as a destination when we're creating a subscription. Currently, I have a small client running, which basically uh, takes the event sets come to it and just uh, dumps it into the console. <clears throat> so uh, the first step is um, event subscription. So part of event subscription, uh, we're currently using basic auth, part of authorization and uh, part of the request body, we have a destination parameter where we are, the user has to give the client address where the final destination where all the events will be sent to from Odin side, uh, which in turn comes from the BMC. Uh, the next is uh, event types. If the event types is empty, uh, we subscribe to all the event types that our uh, request supports. Uh, if the user wishes to subscribe to a specific set of events, we can do the same. So uh, we also specify uh, origin of resources as uh, systems and managers. Currently, uh, any resource change that happens under systems collection and manage collection, that event will be triggered and sent to the destination that's imported here. And uh, subordinate resource to uh, means that um, any resource, subordinate resource under the systems or managers collection, any changes that happen to it or any events that are coming to that particular resources will be sent to the same destination. Let me go ahead and uh, create a subscription. So uh, as we saw in the architecture diagram, uh, for a certain set of operations, we respond uh, with tasks. So uh, if a certain set of operations takes more than standard amount of uh, time, we respond back with task URIs where the user can monitor the task and uh, verify if, uh, the status of it. Uh, so when we do a get on that task URI that's come in the request, uh, sorry, response body, we can see that percentage completed is zero, uh, the body that's been given for that operation and all the information that has been done for that particular operation will be given here. And the status of that operation, uh, currently we can see that it's complete and we can verify the response of that operation with task monitor. If you click on, um, the task monitor and get that information, we can get the uh, response of it. Okay, looks like there's an already uh, another request. Let me verify that. Maybe I clicked it twice when I was creating the subscription. Yeah, uh, I might have clicked it twice when I was creating the subscription. If I do a get on this, we can see that the same information is there when we are creating a subscription with the same destination and the origin of resources. Yeah, uh, as we saw in the earlier demo, there was a conflict, right? So uh, similarly, we can see uh, success response since we, I clicked it twice, I think there was a delay when I was clicking it and it, it says that the resource is already in use, which is basically we have created the same subscription with the same destination and uh, uh, all the other information that we have. Let's get to uh, adding a plugin. So currently uh, we can, uh, add a plugin using aggregation source. Currently, if we do a get on aggregation source uh, sources, we see that there are no members present under it. So uh, let's go ahead and start by adding a plugin to aggregation source. 
So as we see uh, for all the operations, I'm using basic auth only instead of creating a token and using that. Uh, if it expires, I'll have to create again and then continue the same. So part of uh, adding a plugin, we mentioned the portion of the plugin, username, password uh, for that plugin. Currently I'm adding the generated fish plugin that we have uh, deployed part of the deployment process. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, even though the service is deployed, uh, we'll have to add it into our MRI to continue to use it. We mentioned the plugin type uh, with uh, compute plugin ID with which we can store the plugin information and uh, the type of authentication that Odium has to use to contact the plugin. We can use either basic auth or token based authentication on the plugin side. If you perform uh, the post operation, Similar to event subscription, we get a task. If we retrieve the task, we get the status of it and the necessary information that's part of the paper. And when we do a get on the task monitor link, we can see the final status of the task, which is do not one created and the resource is added with plugin ID, GRF, and the details that we have provided. The location of that particular resource will be provided as part of the response header. If we take this information and do a get operation on the same, we can retrieve that particular uh, plugin resource. So now that we have added plugin, uh, if we get to say, Managers instead of systems managers. Uh, okay, as I was saying, the token is expired, so we get 401 and authorized. We create a session token again. We can configure the uh, token expiry time also part of the config file. Perform get operation. We see there are uh, there are two managers. Uh, so when we currently uh, deploy Odin, uh, default we get one uh, manager. I think this is the one, which is Odin as the manager itself, and the other is the plugin as the manager. This is the plugin manager ID. So uh, we can see that the status is enabled. Part of adding the plugin, we also verify the status if it's running or not, and we update the so these uh, get on this particular manager link on the status. If in uh, if any point of time the plugin is down, the status will be uh, disabled. Similarly, if we do get on the other link. We have uh, Odium RA as the manager and the UID that we have provided part of the config file. So, if we since we currently added the plugin uh, and we've added the subscription with uh, managers as the origin of resource, on the uh, client side, we are going to get a resource added event with the URL to the uh, manager's plugin, which is currently the plugin ID. So uh, the user can wish to do any operation based on this event. Say once the plugin is added or do certain set of operation. So the user can choose to uh, monitor and uh, perform any operation on the client side. Now, since plugin doesn't have any systems as such, only manager, so we got only managers as the result added. Now, if we go to adding a BMC. Similar to uh, what we have, uh, again, uh, adding a particular resource, we provide the resource information and the plugin ID with which we want to add the BMC. 
I'm also using the basic auth uh, here. If you perform the host operation, again, we get a task ID. We perform get operation on the task. Currently, it will take a couple of minutes. So part of uh, adding us a BMC, uh, it will uh, first validate the credentials that's been given to it uh, via the plugin. And also via the plugin, it will uh, get all the uh, subordinate resources under uh, that particular BMC. It will uh, fetch all the systems, managers, chassis, and each of the uh, links that are present under e and our, uh, each of those uh, parent URLs. So we traverse through all the uh, links that are uh, responded by the uh, BMC and get all the information and store it into our uh, inventory uh, until we uh, get a leaf node. So uh, say for example, uh, if we do get on systems, we get multiple systems and for each of the system, we get uh, say uh, number of processors and each of the processor information and each of the driver information, each of the uh, network adapter information, so on and so forth. Uh, we also make sure that uh, there are no uh, uh, repetitive of links uh, so that we don't uh, keep doing the same, get on uh, the same links. Uh, also part of uh, saving this information, uh, we uh, create a certain uh, indexes for uh, under Redis DB for search and filter operations. Uh, so currently, when I did a first gate, it was at 15%. Let me do it again. You can see that uh, the task is completed, the status OK, and percentage with 100%. So to get the response of the task, finally, uh, when you do get on the task monitor, you get that the resource is created with the information that the user has provided and the uh, location of that particular resource will be given in the header. If we do a get on that particular resource, we get the resource information, which is the host name, username used, and the plugin ID used to add that. And if we go to the client that we were running, we can see that there are two more events that are uh, coming, uh, both of which are resource added one for uh, the systems and or the BMC and one for the managers and other BMC. And if we go back to uh, the systems collection under Warden, okay. uh, let me create a token again. Yeah, we see that the added VMC's uh, system information is present here. If we get on this particular system, we get all the resource information that is there under that particular VMC. Uh, so we can traverse through each of these links and get, we can uh, find each of the individual resource information. Uh, the next step is I'll be showing the removing of this resource. Uh, say, okay, let me do get on aggregation sources. We have two aggregation sources. If we do get on nothing, now this is the BMC that we added. So if we perform delete operation on this particular uh, aggregation source. We delete the BMC from volume and in turn delete the uh, DB, DB entries that we have. Similar to other operations, we do get on the task service to find out the status of the task. It's completed. And we do a get on the task monitor to find out the status of it. Okay, sorry. I'm supposed to use get on the task monitor. As since I used to delete it, I was showing method not allowed. 
Okay. So once we have deleted the task, I think. Uh, one second. Okay. Once we do a get on this particular uh, task uh, and we've deleted the resources, uh, we no longer have that resource present with us. If we do a get down systems, one second, sorry, let me create it open again. If we do a get down systems, we have empty members and on the event uh, client side, we get a resource removed event with the system URL that we have removed. Uh, yeah, so this is part of the demo for a couple of use cases under our audio Okay, thanks a lot, Shiva. Uh, request the audience for any questions if they have. Uh, so, there's one more. Uh, Query some options like provision not using. So, uh, so this is not a provisioning tool as such, right? So, if you see the BMC and the servers already up, we just help you manage that. Uh, if it's a bare metal uh, system, then the client uh, layer some provisioning or workflow engine can kick off the that could also be driven by ansible so this comes at uh, layer below you know this is like a bare metal as a service only so we don't do os provisioning ourselves but uh, we can uh, help you in doing that say like uh, you know changing the boot order so that it uh, picks up the os media from a remote location boots it one time from that so the install goes through and then you know restart with the old uh, boot order which will point to the local disk so we don't do provisioning but then uh, the life cycle uh, the thing uh, will have and then uh, the event management and stuff we provide so we we just are helping you select server so so what can happen is from the uh, top layer you know the composition layer what you can enable is that uh, you search for a certain uh, server configuration you need for your workload. Uh, say you're introducing a new service, then what you do is, and, and you know you need uh, say two CPU, dual CPU systems or four CPU systems with so much RAM and uh, so much storage. So all this infrastructure would have been added and you know that's why we have the Redis database where we have all the infrastructure details and uh, when you you can query us and then you know kick off your workflow where uh, you install OS and uh, claim that system for your use case. Do you get the point? Any other questions? Very few questions. So I think they're all very clear. Give them some more time and uh, see if there are questions coming up. Uh, Bharat, there's a question in the chat, uh, not the Q and A 
tab about the normal chat window. Yeah. Uh... Uh, Prakash, Starling X, uh, I am not aware of that. Are you aware of that, uh, Shiva? Uh, I'm sorry, but I've never heard about Starling X. Okay, it's some... Um... Um, so, uh, maybe we can uh, open the voice for the, just a minute. Okay, so uh, Prakash, uh, I had a quick look at that. So this Starling X uh, could be a client to Odim, you know? So one of the things, uh, maybe it was not very clear in the presentation was Odim is, uh, since it's based uh, purely on Redfish. So we can uh, support uh, hardware uh, servers, uh, network uh, fabric and uh, storage across vendors. So to compose a node, you can use Odim and maybe your Starling X can, you know, be not bound to Odim and then select a server and do all the things like you know they have all the support for uh, you know Ceph and uh, keystone and all that they use as enablers and then they give you fault management and stuff like that right configuration management all that so they they can be a client to odim so odim will send at the bare metal layer as we said in the beginning of the presentation but exact interworking, I'm not sure because I have not explored selling X. So we are uh, with the, our website is, uh, you know, wiki.odim.io. So we are with the Linux uh, foundation, you know. So all of this ironic mass and BMAS currently LFN Linux Foundation, I said, no? LFE is maybe the potential partner, but uh, right now we don't work with them. So ironic mass and BMAS and all that. So we, we are like, uh, you could say BMAS, uh, BMAS uh, implementation, but the other things uh, we can, uh, you know, we can work under them so that we interface with the hardware to the event management and uh, selection composition service we can provide. And uh, when you say ironic and all, they'll have the same old, like, you know, all this provisioning and all those in detail they'll do. We don't go for either the Vim uh, layer or the software. We work at only the bare metal, which is across hardware. So you can have a data center that is uh, composed of a mix of HP or uh, Dell and other vendors. And uh, with the plugin for each of those type, you can you know, seamlessly work. And we provide only the Redfish APIs uh, to the northbound. So your Rhino, Ironic and Mass and other adapters, yes, they don't have to see which is the vendor, sub vendor and all those things that's not needed. You just treat it as a Redfish device and uh, interact with that.
yeah thanks a lot uh i'll project i think that uh, site was there in the presentation but i'll type it in So this here is the link for the project. Uh, and we are uh, looking for partnership with uh, various organizations uh, currently, the CNTT and uh, you know, Open Compute and all that. But uh, it's in, I wouldn't say we, we have a relation with them right now. Server configuration YAML. We provide a JSON the thing. I don't have a... so the the Redfish is to if you want to interact with the server, you'll have to send a, a Redfish request. And uh, if you're uh, thinking of YAML, I think we'll have to have some kind of uh, converter, you know, plugin that converts from YAML to Redfish. I think there's one more. Any other questions from anyone? You use server configuration. Uh, we we only provide a Redfish, so uh, you know the Redfish being a REST, and uh, we use uh, we accept JSON payloads. So whatever YAML to JSON, as I, I mean said, you know that has to be done through some adapter. So we only provide Redfish APIs on uh, using JSON payloads. Anything else? Uh, so that's what, uh, what's your name? See, that, that's what I was saying, like, you know, uh, it's one payload that will work for both HP and Dell uh that way it is uh you know standard based and interoperable but we don't have yaml support we only give redfish api support so you form a redfish request and send it will respond to that so in that sense like if you uh, if you can convert from that yaml request to this then uh, json payload we, only then we'll respond but uh, it doesn't make the difference whether it's HP or Dell for us.
Is that all, uh, Prakash? Or so, Prakash, you can leave your uh, your mail with us, and we can, you know, get back if you have more questions. Okay, there's some more question from Prakash. Uh, do you support Kubernetes cluster API based support these days? Very, very as well. We we are adding uh, support for Kubernetes uh, cluster. I don't know what you mean by Kubernetes cluster API. So we are currently implementing uh, the thing on the Kubernetes so that you know the you can have multi-node cluster running ODIM. And um, it the API service which we discussed will be exposed to the external world. Anyway, the rest of the servers, uh, you know, the microservice won't provide an interface to the external world even today when they run on Docker. So you can route your uh, request through the API and um, that will do the work of forwarding the request to the various microservices do the, that do the service and uh, you know, get back the response. And as far as uh, the roles are concerned, we support the standard uh, uh, Redfish uh, profiles, accounts and you know roles and uh, if you want, we can add also the OEM. There is a provision for that, but of default, like uh, the framework is there for that, but the default install will not have any. The same thing. So when 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 somebody customizes, they can add their own roles and accounts, and uh, they can uh, uh, you know roles and uh, privileges, so they can have a control on what the user can do or not do. Do you have any questions on this again? Uh, project in CNCF Metal 3. Okay, is that the project you're associated with? Okay, this is where you come from. The... Bare metal. So th this is for uh, what you're saying, metal three, as I understand quickly having a look, is that this is about provisioning uh, Kubernetes on bare metals, right? But uh, as I said uh, to the previous question, that ODIM sits below that. So ODIM lets you get to those bare, select those bare metals and manage them from the hardware perspective, you know, hardware eventing and all that. So when you do a composition, again, part of the Redfish, you select the server and then you get a reference back to that server. And then on top of that, you could use this metal three which seems to be a provisioning Kubernetes on metal, bare metal. So similar, similar thing to what I said for that uh, Ironic and all those other projects, right? So Ironic or even Metal 3 will be able to act as a client in terms of, you know, the hardware life cycle is done by ODIM and the software life cycle, whether it is Kubernetes deployment on BMS or Vim, uh, you know, setting up VMware or any other virtualization, software and on top of that building a VM and all that is the client layer for us. We are only helping you with the bare metal composition across vendors. So it looks to me like, you know, uh, 
uh, metal three can sit on top of Odim. Select which server it needs to be using for the workload, and then deploy itself will be deploying Kubernetes on as a bare metal implementation. Is it clear, Prakash? Uh, I can't uh, pronounce your name, but Pre Prem Slav, we began around 70 minutes back, uh, 6.30 Indian time. So we've been in this way for about uh, one hour, 10 minutes. Yeah. Any other questions? Getting quiet again. <laughs> Yeah, team, uh, just pulling again for any questions that you might have. Uh, I think, yeah, Joseph. Can you type your question in, uh, Joseph? Joseph Prabhu.
Hello, Bharat. Hi, hi, hello. Great, great, great. I was looking for the, uh, you know, the mute button and it was not able to finish. So how did the call go? I, I'm Joe's from uh, AMI. We have been working with you on Vodem. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, how was the presentation? Is it done or? Is yeah, we just finished about 15 minutes back. So we are uh, seeing if people have questions. Okay, okay. That is good. That is good. Uh, yeah. So, Joe's, as he said, is from AMI, and you know, we have been working with them on the composition part, uh, where they act as a northbound client to us and uh, take our services for composing notes for the different workloads. Thank you. Thank you, but yeah. And will this session be available as a recording, so I can see what was pitched, what was presented? Yeah, I think uh, all registered people have access to the recordings. All right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Good. Thanks a lot. You can mute me again. I'll go back. Yeah. So, team, we have, I mean, I think uh, been calling calling for questions. So do you do you have uh, any questions for us? Or else I think we can end this event. So any people who joined late in, including Viskovsky uh, please uh, make use of the recording that is that will be available after the event. Thanks a lot. And I think uh, moderator, we can close the end the call.